recording this first. And we're recording. Yay! Uh, <laughs> it's Happy Pub Day here on a Mighty Blaze. I'm Robin Call on behalf of Reading with Robin and A Star is Bored. Wait, do you have your copy, Byron? Yes, I have a copy handy. Matching? Yay! Matching. Oh my God. Byron and I were having a fabulous time in the green room before and that's I've just right. been so excited about this book ever since Stephen told me about it. And oh, thank you. Oh, oh my God, the galley arrived and I was like, how clever is this? How brilliant is this? I know it's going to be hilarious and heartfelt and just a delicious read, just what you want to be reading. And mm. it was. There you oh, go. wow. Thanks, Robin. Thank you. You're welcome. So it is pub day. The book just came out today for real. I mean, it's been yeah. out there, but it's out for real. Oh, an intro for Byron. I always forget uh, that. Ah, let's introduce him, shall we? Byron Lane is a playwright and screenwriter. He's also worked as a journalist and on a person and as a personal assistant to celebrities, including Carrie Fisher. He's originally from New Orleans and lives in Los Angeles with his, now this is dated, fiance. It's dated now, I know. It's already, I need the second edition. <laughs> We're ready. We're ready for reprinting. I need to start reprinting with his fiance and their rescue dog. His this is his first novel. I don't want to have any spoilers, but your acknowledgments with your proposal. I just oh. spoiled it. Oh no, no, it's okay. I think it's great. Let's share the love, right? And you and you and you tweeted it and it was on Instagram and all that. So if you guys didn't yeah. know, I'm not gonna tell you any spoilers about the book, but congratulations to you and Steven. So, Thank you so much. Thank um, you. We're so excited. I mean, how much, you know, there's nothing, I mean, you know. it's a weird, crazy time, right? And you guys are yep. making all the fun and making things exciting. And, you know, there's a lot to celebrate. And A Star is Bored is out today. Check out the New York Times. Awesome review. I mean, so did you know that was coming or do they just pop up? I don't know how that works. Uh I was told they were considering it, and uh, and then I was told it might come out uh, in August. So oh. when it popped when it popped up this morning, I was really surprised. So that's so cool because I know that yeah. you know anything can happen, whether it's TV. You know, we just know this, and there's a sense of that. But until you actually see it, because I've seen a lot of very surprised authors, and you can't all be such great actors. So. I figure there's, there's a lot of, so did, did somebody start like, did, was your phone buzzing or did you get tagged or what happened? Uh, so this is so Hollywood frou-frou, but I got an email uh, that, uh, from the publicist saying that uh, they had posted it. And so that's how I found out. And, but then Steve's family, I'm on a, a long text chain uh, with them. Yeah. And then some of them started posting it too. Um, and you know, you have some sense that it might happen, but you, you don't know if it'll be nice. No, you and, don't. And uh, so this one was nice. And I was so, I was so delighted. It was really beautiful and sweet and touching. Oh, so nice and really captures the heart of this novel. And I've posted it. Um, I'm sure the, I'm sure the folks at a mighty blaze are, are diligently finding the, the review so they can post it. I know I, I feel that it's being posted on Facebook as we're, chatting and i'll make sure oh. it's up on reading with robin and also go to byronlane.com it's like the hottest book everywhere it gets everywhere as well oh. as it should be and find him on instagram on twitter on facebook you can like his page and leave those five star reviews on amazon on goodreads it's really appreciated and i mean title cover story how much else can you do? This is like- Thank you, Robin. Really, like it's, well, it's my kind of book, you know? I mean, Good. people know when I say that, know that they're in for a treat. Like people who like to read what I read and I read, you know, a wide variety. But when I sink down with a book like this and right away you're, you're introduced to Charlie and he's going for this job interview. Can you start, a, and there's no spoilers. The book just came out today. We will be meeting with Byron at the end of August on the book bash, and that's a book club chat. So very different. But for today, besides the fact that Byron and Steve are engaged, there's no spoilers. So, no spoilers. so tell us about that scene and what it was like writing that and what you tapped into. Got it. So a Star's Board's inspired by the time that I was personal assistant to Carrie Fisher. And so that scene where Charlie is uh, having his job interview with celebrity Kathy Cannon, 
uh, was inspired a bit by my real life uh, chat with uh, Carrie Fisher. And um, so in the book, of course, Charlie, who's kind of this down and out guy who really needs a lifeline, shows up for this interview with Kathy Cannon, who's herself a big star and larger than life. So they're really, they're really polar opposites, and they're, uh, but they come together in a way that kind of heals each other. And so the first interview scene is, um, was not too different from how it was when I went to interview with, with Carrie Fisher. So her, she lives in, um, her home's in, in Beverly Hills, and uh, it's a big estate, and you walk up a, a beautiful brick walk right. You see some of this in um, the documentary that, that was on HBO, yes. Bright Light. And uh, so there's, so it's, it's, really, it's really less of a home and more of a compound or an artist colony with uh, things hanging from the trees and, and uh, lights everywhere. And um, so I knocked on the door there and uh, Carrie and I sat in her living room and um, she really was just uh, very chill. And I am very serious. So, so she's relaxed and just having an e-cigarette. And I'm like, what? Tell me about the job. What, what, are, the, what are the parameters? What are the hours? You know? And um, at a certain point, I remember having the thought, like, I'm just going to kind of take over a little bit, do my thing. So I remember just saying to her, let me just sum up who I am. Uh, I'm serious. I'm efficient. I'm a former journalist. So I can take notes for you and I'll make sure your calendar is set and da da da. And how does that sound? And she was like, you seem groovy. And that was, that was it. You know, and you do seem groovy. I would. Oh, tell you, thanks Robin. I totally pick up on that vibe. That scene. I mean, just where Charlie's at the gate, imagining meeting, you know, face to face with a childhood hero and buzzing in or touching the guy I and mean, just, you know, in the car and the whole thing. And I was just, you know, I was right along there for the ride. I just was like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen behind this door? And also, did she offer you a, a, a Coke Zero? Was that her thing? Yes, she offered me a Coke Zero. She poured it herself. And I thought that was surprising. <laughs> um, she was the first big celebrity I'd ever met. And so um, I couldn't believe there wasn't just like a button she pushes and someone brings <laughs> one out or whatever. Uh, and she, yep, she also wanted to share, uh, she wanted me to try an e-cigarette, uh, which I, of course, did, and uh, I felt so cool. So, yeah, it was very, she was just very cool, very chill. Um, uh, you so much. You seem groovy. And then from there, their relationship, it's such um, an amazing thing to read because you, the reader really can see the heart of the novel and where... Uh, they sort of, I mean, not to be all Tom Cruise, complete each other or whatever, but like, you know, there's missing parts and there are so many things that people can offer to each other. And it's sometimes something very minor, but huge, you know, depending on who's doing the giving or the receiving. And it's just, um, it's a beautiful story. Plus it's hilarious. Oh. You know, there's nothing like laughing out loud when you're reading a book. Oh, that's I mean, great. Yeah, because it's, you know, there's, and it's funny because everything is so online now, there really aren't, there really aren't audiences, don't really hear much, <laughs> really hear much laughter, you have to make it yourself, but sitting down and reading A Star is Bored, and then I held it up again, you know, I was laughing, and it's very clever, and it's, um, you know, there were a lot of things I, I stopped to, to look up to see, you know, which movie, was that a real thing, you know, you had me going there, oh, and it opens with not one, but two attorneys here, your, your attorney yeah. and your publisher's attorney. Was that for real? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the publisher's attorney did, did want to add that, some of that stuff. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was, I thought it was, I wasn't sure if it was a joke. I was like, well. Yeah, no, the, yeah, no, the top one I wrote. And then in the process of just making sure everything was cool and safe, he was like, can we add a little more? And I was like, oh. I think it's cool because I've never seen this. I've read like a gazillion yeah. books and I've never seen such a thing in my life. And oh, good. So, yeah, I thought that was really great. I mean, there's always the, you know, based on and, and all of these disclaimers, but like a, a real life, like, is this book notarized somewhere? <laughs> right, right. It should be. Yeah. Did I miss it? Uh, and I'm chatting with Byron Lane on Pub Day. The book just came out and check out just go to byronlane.com and you'll be very busy. You just can, and, and then it will, I mean, I think that people do want to go back and 
um, read up on Carrie Fisher and, you know, all of these stories and, um, you know, can't talk about this without talking about how sad and it's been four years, almost four yeah, years. Yeah, it was 2016. And her books are so good. She, she was such a brilliant writer and artist and um, even the films she did. I mean, yeah, I hope people do go back and, and look at some of that stuff. I think that, you know, it's such a tribute in that way and just the whole relationship. And of course it's fiction. So which were the parts without giving anything away that you got to sort of add, take a lot of liberty with that you either maybe wished had happened or you just were like, I'm groovy, I'm gonna make this up. Right, right. Well, there's a lot of imagination in there. So it's an interesting mix, I think, that of what a lot of writers do, just uh, channeling life experience and imagination. So it's much imagination uh, that, that comes from my experience with her and also other assistants and their experiences with their celebrity bosses and even other employers I've had who weren't famous. Um, and then life experience is the same thing. Uh, my family or chatting with friends and experiences they had with their family and just trying to kind of weave that all together. Yeah, such a magical story. It's, it's, it's really that kind of, um, you know, take you away. And, you know, I know I've said it a lot of times because it's true. This is what people are, are yearning for. A lot of people are like, I really don't have time to read, but now I do, but I want something that's a sure thing. I mean, no pressure, right? <laughs> Like they want, I know, right? Like, yeah, just give me like your top five or just like the best books. And I always say, well, have you been to my Facebook page? I only talk about the books that I love. You know, that's what I do. So they're yeah. all, they're winners. And it's, it's the kind of thing where I just, I just think like how creative, excuse me, somebody is to weave this whole story apart from personal experience, you know, and just like you say, imagination and um, there's nothing like the, I mean, who doesn't love the devil wears Prada, you know, like that kind of, that kind of peek into what that relationship is like and how needy it can be, you know? And so what are some of the things Charlie is maybe surprised Kathy is in need of? I think that he is surprised that she needs, uh, really many of the life's essentials, love, um, structure, um, maybe a person to say no every now and then. Um, and I think that those things are known to Charlie because he's experienced those kind of things in his own life. So his own life is full of walls, full of boundaries, set up by his parents, set up by uh, a job he hates where he was working in the middle of the night and That's isolated in that way. Yeah, it was a hard, it's a hard life for Charlie. And, uh, and then there's Kathy Cannon, the celebrity, where it looks like life should be really easy for her. Mm -hmm. But uh, she has money, she has fame, she has access. But in a strange way, they're both isolated, right? Him by his own doing, his own fears about living well, life fully, and she's isolated by her fame and, and by uh, seeing the world just through that lens. And so it's interesting how different they are, and yet they have this common thing. Um, that they can latch on to. And I'm not sure they, they even really uh, speak the same language. I'm mm -hmm. not sure that they, they would both be able to articulate that exact thing, that exact uh, tug of war that they're in, in communicating. But, um, but it, does, it did do something special to them. And I hope that readers feel that in the book. It's very palpable. And I think that um, that's just like to the larger issue of we don't, you know, sometimes people don't necessarily see people together or friends together or what, you know, they don't, you don't always know what it is that people bring to each other. It may not always be obvious, but it's so there. And, you know, sometimes people don't even know what it is that they're looking for, but when you see it, you know, and you say groovy. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love that. Yes. Say gro groovy is one of those words that you just can't say often enough. I think, oh. I think that's one of the things that um, it's one of those words that just, I know it keeps coming back, but it really is. It is quite a word. Um, so how long did you work on this for? I never asked that question, but I am curious. That's okay. It took a couple of years to get it all together. And uh, obviously, like many drafts, the usual thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then when the books came, when your box, did you, I mean, I know that this has been a weird time for mail, packages, all that, but did a book, box of books arrive? Yes, it came in a, there were a couple cycles. So I first got um, advanced reader copies. Right. And um, I was really, I was 
so I, I had already kind of cried all my tears of happiness and joy. I, I cried when my agent said that she would represent me. And then I cried when my editor, James Malia, said that he would edit the book. And um, wow. those were big moments for me. And then when I got the advanced reader copies, one thing that was on my mind was a concern that the book was huge because <laughs> of, because of COVID, uh, all the mail was delayed and messed up. And I kept seeing people get their books before me and they would take pictures with them. And it looked enormous well, in their hand. Hilarious. You thought it was just too large. I was like, is this uh, like a huge, like, <laughs> it, like a big print? Like what's happening? I was worried about that. And oh, that's uh, funny, yeah. Byron. <laughs> so when I got the advanced reader copies, I, uh, I was mostly just relieved that like, they were like normal size, you know, <laughs> that was a special moment. I love that. I would never even think of that, but right now, well, you know, not that everybody's taking pictures to scale and also perception is so bizarre. So I could imagine that if you'd had just the right slash wrong photographers on your, on your book, you'd be like, what is this monster? <laughs> yeah. And, and me as a, a writer, a little sensitive because it's, it's a heartfelt story and I wanted to, I wanted to be presented well and all that. And I did, uh, then I got a little nervous when the hardcovers arrived because I had that proposal in the back yes. and Steve, Steve didn't know. And so I, uh, I kind of, I kind of pulled this up and pulled out a book and said, uh, Hey, I made a change. Will you look at this? Tell me what you think. And then that's how I showed him that. Oh, that's how you show, oh, I thought, see, I was going to ask you that. I didn't know if you just said, you know, Hey, you know, the book's here. And then he would say, well, I read it. I heard 8 million drafts. I read it. I know. I'm not reading yeah. your book again, <laughs> right? Or something yeah. like that. So you just said, "Oh, okay." I thought mm -hmm. like you were waiting like around the house to hear him go, like, "What am I reading?" Or something. No, Robin, like you're right. I was scared I would be waiting for months and months for him to pick <laughs> it up again. Yeah. That yeah. would have been yeah, like hello. I mean, because uh -huh. I love that. So then you said, "Could you just check this?" Is that that's what? Yeah. You will you look at this? Yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. god, that is that just really awesome. sweet. So sweet. How long had you been planning that? Well, it was kind of last minute because okay. the um, the arts had already been printed, and I wasn't even sure if I could fit in the thing on the end of the hardcover. Right. And so I called James and was like, "Hey, can we add a few words to the acknowledgement?" And he was like, "Well, what are the words? Like, what? Well, this is really <laughs> at the line. I got to check." And so then I said, "Oh, I want to propose." He was so happy for me and so supportive, and I made some that. calls and some emails and made it happen. And made it done right. So I so I don't know like how is that like two months before they arrived or three months something like that. Yeah, something like that. So then you had to wait until you got it. Yep. So yep. Then you had the worry about the big book. You had the worry. <laughs> it's a lot of. I know. So now it's like deep sigh. Like. Yes, and you know, Robin, I was also this whole time going through chemo because my testicular cancer came back after five years of no sign of cancer. And so it was a lot going on um, all at once. It was, but it was also sort of um, good timing, bad timing, because I, I didn't feel, so the chemo made me tired and a little sick and all that. And, uh, but people weren't, it wasn't like I was missing parties or get togethers, you know, no oh. one was doing that stuff. No. And then the truth is I had the book to look forward to. I knew I would be done in July and the book would be coming awesome. out the end of July. And so it really was nice to have something to look forward to. That's awesome. Wow, yeah. we look great and full of energy. I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. I'm wearing my cap. I'm keeping warm, you know. Awesome. Yeah, and how, what, how's it going out there in LA? What's, what's doing in California? Uh, everything is good. California is really sunny and lovely. And, um, you know, um, I, I'm originally from Louisiana. So I, all I knew back then was humidity and rain and thunderstorms. And I got to say, I don't miss much of that, you know. I can imagine it's a nice change. So where's the puppy? I thought we were going to maybe get to see. Oh, do you want to see Tilda? She might be sleeping. Let me go. I'll, I'll go run and get her. Do you mind? Or Yeah, no, no. I'm going to go get her. It'll be okay. back in a flash. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me talk yeah. about Byron while he goes to get Tilda. I didn't, I figured he would say, oh, she's right by my feet. Let me pick her up. But, you know, you never know. You ask. Here she comes. Did you could get a no? Oh, was she sleeping, Byron? She was having a little baby nap. Oh, oh. <laughs> Tilda. She's so cute. Oh. Hi, baby. I thought I was telling the audience. I thought maybe she would be at your feet, and you'd say, "Oh, let me just get her." But she. I would, know. She went she's to having a little nap. She's an she's an old lady now, so so she her takes her. Uh, she gets her rest. And she just has the the one eye. When we adopted her, she was like that. She was she was a mess at first. Um, what a sweet. Is she the sweetest girl ever. She she's be. so sweet, but she's also she's also very independent. Okay, good girl. Well, she's a girl. So like, yeah. 
She's a girl. Yes. What? The, yeah. boy, the boy dogs are a little bit less uh, in, as in very dependent. I mean, I guess I shouldn't say that across the board, but from the dogs that I know, the girls are a little more independent, you know, yeah. like in real life. <laughs> yeah. She likes to just chill and Aww. take her rest. And as she gets older, it's less and less interested in, in other things. But yeah. she's really, uh, she's such an inspiration because she, before we got her, the Lang Foundation had found her uh, and, and at, a, uh, at a shelter and she needed a lot of help. She had been shot with BBs, she had broken ribs, wow. she had all these problems. She had her eye was, was all messed up. So Lang Foundation took her, patched her up, did the surgery on the eye, got the BBs out and, and whatever, and uh, made her ready for adoption. That's when we found her. Um, you, she found such a beautiful home. Did you <sighs> name her Tilda or was that her name? No, she had a different name, and Steve and I wanted to change it. We weren't sure what, and he was looking through a People magazine and saw a photo of Tilda Swinton, I was and gonna... was like, "She's blonde, she's beautiful, but also kind of interesting looking." I what love about? That. And we were like, "Oh, that's perfect." I love that. I was wondering if that's who she was named for. I mean, you guys are out there in La La Land, so I know why I... not. So Tilda, um, well, thank we you. joke now that as she gets older, she's a little bit more Judy Dench, but <laughs> we still love her. They're oh, both they're both stars. Oh yes, they're stars. Yeah. She's a star, yeah. and I'm chatting with Byron Lane, who's a Star is Born is right here. Now, is this font? Is this the Star is Born font or no? I don't know. I actually don't even know that they. Uh, I was looking great. At, and I was thinking of the Barbara Streisand edition, and I was mm -hmm. like. Is that the same font? I don't know. Maybe I'm excited. I don't know either. It could be. They, uh, the great artists over there came up with that and sent it to me, and I was like, well, I love it. And I, so I was, it was very easy. It just pops. So was this always the title? Because it's the perfect, I mean, it's the perfect title. Before this, it was just a uh, celebrity assistant, just a boring <laughs> old, uh, that, was my, that was my placeholder. And, uh, hey, it worked. But I it worked. I thought we can do better than that. So I just did some good old fashioned brainstorming and A Star is Born had just come out. Uh -huh. And there's a, a lot of moments in the book where um, Kathy expresses boredom with life. And so I was like, that, it made me laugh when I thought of it. And uh, so we, yeah, we landed on it. It's hilarious. It was one of my favorite movies. Um, all, all of the time. Well, four times? Four, right? I know they they are not messing around with that thing. They keeps, no. It has a life of its own. No, I know. I can only imagine what's going to happen next, starring Tilda Swinton. No, so the, um, I'm there for it, <laughs> right? I know. Any any iteration of a star is born. So check out ByronLane.com. I just keep repeating that so people will remember. And I know a mighty blaze is typing that out. And it's really a kind thing to do to leave reviews on Amazon and Goodreads. So a plug for that. And also tell your friends. I mean, there are so many nice things to do for the authors who write these amazing books and share um, so much with the readers. So share the books, guys. I oh, hope, thanks, I Robin. I'd like to say that. You're welcome. Taylor Jenkins Reid, Julia Claiborne Johnson, Lori Gelman. I, I, I loved um, Class Mom and you volunteered. That was some funny stuff. And completely outrageous and positively lovely. It's just a win all around. I could not love this book more, and I'm so excited yeah. to be chatting with you on Pub Day. Pub Day, Robin. Pub Day, and people still think, I mean, on my personal page, I post that, and people are like, we're going to the pub, and I'm like, publication, like, I've been doing that for years on Tuesdays, but, yeah. you know, I can't expect everybody to be paying the same focus. The Reading with Robin gang knows, and the Mighty Blaze gang obviously knows. Tuesdays yeah. are a huge day. The books come out, we celebrate them, we share them, we mm. take pictures, we Instagram them, we re-Instagram them, regram. Regram. Re Are you on TikTok or do you not do that? I don't post anything and I'm not signed up, but I do watch. Oh, well, oh so you can watch without doing all the other stuff? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, so, you don't have to sign in. Can you explain it to me in like, you know, four or 10 words? Yeah, so it's just quick little videos. Some of them are funny bloopers. Some of them are cooking tips. Some of them are um, like tips for how to store your avocado so in the fridge so it doesn't get brown. Okay. Um, so it's really all kinds of like little little things that people want to share. And much of it is is dumb and pointless. So there are times where it takes <laughs> a while before you get something that causes some laugh out loud moments. Okay. 
Um, but uh, but hey, hey, you know, if you got some time to kill and you want to see some some folks having a good time, what is it, right? Yeah, what yeah. Are you going? What are we doing? I, <laughs> That's I'm right. Tutelage because I didn't know that I could just like be a little bit of a voyeur and just see. I, I'm yeah. told that it's not something I need to deal with because I have enough. But I also <laughs> don't like to miss out on anything, you know. Yeah, it's easy. It's just that you just download the app and then you just click. And then sometimes you can see when, a, like I have one friend who she refuses to watch any videos that don't have a certain number of views. So she knows that she does the quality by that. So you just flip through and then they, they serve you. So it's not like, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So this is tech support with Byron Lane. Not only the <laughs> yes. star is born, but he teaches TikTok too. So That's right. Whatever you need. Oh, thank you so much, Byron. This was such a treat. And to oh, Robin, up, thank you. Say hi to Steve. You'll continue. I will. When you're tired of me, like, um, felling, as we say, all over your book, let me know. Say, stop. Oh, stop sharing your no. book, Robin. I'm so grateful to you. Thank you. The support really does mean the world. My first book, and it oh. feels like a big deal, and I'm grateful. It is a huge big deal. There's nothing like a debut novel. And when it's just, you know, grabs you and just says, like, come read me, come hang with me. Mm. I mean, that's what I want to be doing. You know, if I have a few minutes to kill, I'll watch Tic Tac. When I have time to spend, I'm reading a good book. So, Great. Yes. Yes. And I even remind, remember to record us. So, yay. You are winning. I love this. Winning. Byron, thank yeah. you so much. On behalf of A Mighty Blaze, we wish you such a happy pub day. Continue oh, thank the you. day. And I'm sure I'll catch you online later. Thank you.